looking for jobs and cannot find jobs because there are no jobs in South Africa. Despite our protest action to the South African Health Product Regulator Authority to source vaccine from Russia and China, the South African government continues to solely import vaccine from the West because the current administration is controlled by the US-led global order. This government continues to frustrate efforts to source vaccines from Russia and China despite their proven superior efficacy even against the Delta variant of COVID-19. It is evident now that the current administration is obsessed with transaction as opposed to saving lives and insulating our people from the coronavirus disease. We still demand that the South African government must source scientifically proven and tested vaccines from all parts of the world, not just from the West. We also wish to remind the people of the entire African continent that the West, with their history of colonialism and present neocolonialism, have never been and will never be friends of black people all over the world. It is therefore foolish to rely on the West to save the lives of black people. It is only a dependable, strong, and solid EFF that can stop South Africa's degeneration, joblessness, and poverty. We call on all our ground forces to intensify the work of the organization and engage in disciplined work to speak to our people. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commander-in-Chief. We will move swiftly to questions. Uh, Commander, uh, Commissar Snow will uh, read us the questions. Can we take the uh, first one? All right. Thank you very much. Sophie Mukwena from SABC News. Her first question is, what is your reaction to the recent developments in Afghanistan? And then the second question is, the election of Zambia President Hakainde Hichilema, what's your reaction? And did you attend the inauguration? And the third question from Ms. Sophie is, how far are the discussions on the election of the President of Pan-African Parliament? Thank you. Shall we do that? One more. Okay. Okay. From Mutibe Mutiba from the Inside Factor, he asks, "What are your thoughts on the increased presence of the army around the country, especially taking into consideration how they've been deployed? Yet the government couldn't give them food; hence, they came asking." for help from the leadership of the EFF. And then uh, from Itumeleng from the Star newspaper, the Star did a story with the help of the EFF exposing a property company that was selling houses to the poor for 600 rand. The director of the company was telling the poor that the houses are being built by the Chinese government in efforts to help the poor. It is estimated that around 2,000 people were scammed. The star has questioned APSA, which was the bank used by the scammers. The question is, what is the CIC's position on the profitability of banks for the poor? And what is the EFF's position on the slow pace of housing in the country? As well as, what is the EFF's response to the unemployment rate caused by the looting? Thank you. I think uh, the development in Afghanistan have exposed the weakness of uh, the imperialism of the USA in trying to impose itself on other countries. And we are of a view that there is a need for a peaceful resolution uh, as opposed to military intervention which is not uh, uh, sustainable. And uh, we are actually happy to see that uh, the US is once more exposed that its intervention from time to time fail not only the people of USA, but the people of the countries, they always tell us that they are going to uh, install stability, uh, human rights, and all manner of things. But whereas the reality is the opposite. Um, uh, we think that the problems confronting any other continent or country, solutions should be coming from those, not self-imposed uh, big brother solutions to those particular countries. Uh, we call for calm. We call for 
a peaceful resolution and for the respect of rights in Afghanistan, especially rights of women and children. And uh, we are calling upon Taliban to ensure that there is no uh, blood on the floor, especially of innocent uh, people, worse women uh, and children. There should be a democratization, respect of human rights, and there should be peace and stability that comes from internal uh, engagements which will produce long-lasting solution in those particular countries. Um, we congratulate the developments in Zambia and uh, we want to take this opportunity to really congratulate the new president and uh, we hope that uh, it will not just be a new phase and uh, things remain the same as they change. Um, uh, we are happy that uh, the former president of Zambia quickly recovered from his uh, a little bit of madness when he wanted to denounce the elections that were run under his own leadership. Uh, he became a sober and normal after uh, 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 accepting that uh, the results are what they are and therefore there's no need for, for him to even create doubt on the credibility of elections that were approved by all observers. Uh, we think that uh, uh, it, this is a new uh, journey uh, for the people of Zambia and uh, if uh, uh, they lead by example, they will inspire a lot of confidence to the people of the region. Uh, Zambia has been a home of a lot of uh, liberation movements during the dark days of our continent and uh, it has led from the front and uh, we hope that they will continue to lead, especially with this uh, type of development. We were invited to the inauguration of the new president and uh, unfortunately we could not attend due to the pressures that we had ourselves here at home to deal with the um, uh, issues uh, relating to local government uh, uh, elections. But we did communicate with the a leadership of the ruling party and the president-elect then that uh, we wish them well and when time permit we'll go and have a, a, an engagement with them. Uh, PAP, we are awaiting the AU's intervention with regard to uh, developments at the Pan-African Parliament. Uh, I heard someone saying we were supposed to meet in August, it's not true. According to the schedule of uh, PAP, we were supposed to meet in October. Um, um, there are correspondences that are uh, you know, being exchanged between uh, uh, PAP and AU, uh, uh, and the TLEC of PAP is in touch with uh, the AU, and uh, the necessary uh, intervention will be made, and at an appropriate moment will intervene. We don't need more soldiers on the ground in South Africa. I think we need a political solution to political problems. Um, uh, the problem we are confronted with in South Africa is not insurrection, it's not a coup, it's not uh, uh, crimes against the state. It is political differences and discontent by the masses of our people on the ground who are desperately seeking the attention of their leadership and intervention, especially in poverty-stricken areas. And I think I'm of the view that the absence of leadership is the one that fuels this uncertainty that we wake up to all the time. Every morning, we are told that there will be a shutdown South Africa because there's no leadership that speaks directly to those issues. And, and worse, that we now spend uh, resources on uh, faceless people that we don't know. Someone just writes a poster and says, there's going to be a shutdown tomorrow. And all manner of resources that we do not have get to be deployed to a faceless threat because the leadership does not have the mechanism to deal with this type of uncertainty 
that we are uh, subjected to. We, we are not longer sure if we will wake up tomorrow, uh, if there will still be malls or there will still be schools or anything of that sort, or they will be bent down. Because even with the deployment of soldiers, those soldiers are not enough uh, to can cover the whole country at the same time. They were never designed for internal political differences and uh, a protest. I saw a nonsensical statement by South African National Defense Force that says there is a spreading of fake news about withdrawal of soldiers and about shortage of food. It's nonsensical in a sense that in the same statement they admit that they've got problems. And the problems happened in KZN where the soldiers were sleeping in schools in the tents uh, without water and without supply of food. And you cannot expect such soldiers to be effective, efficient, and continue to honor their deployment. Uh, many of them reached out to the EFF and we made the necessary contact with authorities to make sure that proper things are done. They were not given even the daily allowance, including the danger allowance, but the same allowances were provided for the soldiers that are deployed uh, in Gauteng. So we found that to be a very unacceptable, and only when we exposed it did the South African National Defense Force start acting on those matters. But at the same time, they called them a fake news. It's an absolute rubbish that this government think it can just intimidate people like that, including intimidating us. We'll never be intimidated by this nonsensical government of Sir Ramaphosa, which says the truth is fake news. They are subjecting us to militarization. They are subjecting us to a police state where we cannot speak uh, freely. A, you know, a young man was arrested at... Uh, uh, a bus station here in Johannesburg for carrying Zuma's t-shirt. He stayed in jail from Friday and then he got released on Monday morning. What do you call that? Since when is it a crime to carry Zuma's t-shirt? You allow that nonsense. It's going to start with Zuma's supporters. It will go to the EFF supporters. They will say, we found this person in EFF t-shirts, with EFF t-shirts, therefore he must be arrested. It's an absolute rubbish that must be stopped with immediate effect. It's going to start with Zuma, it's coming to all of us. We have nothing to do with Zuma. People who want to support Zuma, they must do it freely, without any form of intimidation. They must do so within the confines of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. They've got a right to do so. Cyril has got no right to stop anyone from supporting anyone, including Zuma. So anyone, whether that is madness or not, people have got a right to be mad. No one can stop them from supporting anyone. So Zuma's supporters must be protected. You know, we're being hypnotized here about Zuma all the time. Uh, when there are serious issues of unemployment, you just see the headline being uh, Jacob Zuma Foundation is asking for donations. Uh, what do you think about that? Why should we comment about a person who's asking for donations? Because donations are voluntary. It's not like there is a national government instruction that we must donate to Zuma. They are saying those who want to donate to Zuma, they must donate to Zuma. No, as a distraction, as, as a way of moving us from real issues, they just say, hey, will you donate to Zuma? How can you donate to Zuma? Hey, every time they want to move us from real issues, we are being told this and that about Zuma. Useless things that we have nothing to do with. So, really, we are entering a dangerous zone. Zuma's t-shirts can never constitute crime. Support for Zuma cannot constitute crime as long as it is done within the confines of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. We must defend even the people 
who disagree with us. In this case, if we disagree with Zuma, we must defend those who defend Zuma, who support Zuma. It is their right to do so. So, these soldiers are deployed to intimidate us, to make us not to express ourselves freely. How can you express yourself freely when there is a man here with a boots and a, a long rifle just moving around, not saying anything? That alone is enough to intimidate people. We are going into elections now with soldiers moving around the streets with guns. That alone is an intimidation. So we must, the sooner we remove the soldiers from the streets, the better. It has become costly and this government doesn't even know how to sustain that. Well, I don't know the scandal you are talking about of uh, people who are selling houses DP. Maybe you know. I don't know. I, I don't know. SG? It was never brought to, to, to our, our attention. Well, uh, 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 there will never be enough houses uh, 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 in South Africa for as long as people do not own the land. Even if you can have as much money to build people um, 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 houses. As long as there is no land, you can't uh, 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 build people houses. Yeah? There is an old woman I want us to build a house in Polokwane. She doesn't have a, she does not have a land. Uh, with a wheelchair and all of that, she doesn't have a land. So when you buy her a land, and build a house, it becomes more expensive. The land itself is expensive. To build a disabled person a house becomes more expensive because we don't have a land. But when I went to bury Tsepotsula uh, there in Lesotho, comrades, you will be shocked that there are no shakes there. There are no shakes. This thing of uh, uh, squatter camps, uh, they are not there. Those people build their own houses. They have a land, they build their own houses. So the problem here is that you must first save money to buy the land. Then save money to build a house. You'll be dead by then. That's why people end up staying in the shacks because the saving money of the land should be the money we save to build ourselves houses. No. No. We save money to build the land and then we must still save money to build houses and then it takes forever. The, the, the unemployment in South Africa will continue to rise because our people do not own the strategic means of production, they do not own the land and the little we own as the state, it is being outsourced. Do you, can you imagine a person buying SAA which has got 700 workers and still maintain the 700 workers is not true, it's not possible. When they buy SAA, the first target is to retrench the workers. The first target is the workers. So the privatization of DNL, ESCOM, uh, Transnet, all of these strategic state institutions, the first victims are going to be workers. So these high levels of unemployment are not going to stop anytime soon if Praveen Gordon is not stopped from his shenanigans. That's why we need a mother of all protest against privatization. Because they are going to privatize electricity. We cannot afford electricity as we speak now. Imagine if this electricity is in the private hands. We cannot afford to fly to Eastern Cape to go and bury our loved ones even during funerals. Imagine if Mango and SAA are to be privatized. It means that it is now going to take a month or so to bury our loved ones because we'll have to keep them in a mutuary until those who have gone out of Eastern Cape to go and work have saved enough to come and bury their loved ones. So 
We have a big problem here, which will lead to social instability. And when there is a social instability, there is no army or police who can stop it. No one can stop them. No one can stop the hungry masses. The most dangerous crimes today are committed by the so-called foreigners. Because those people are dead already. I mean, you, you cross a river with crocodiles and then you come, you, you come to another country, you are still alive. That's a bonus. It's equal as being dead. There's nothing more to fear. If you look at that attitude, you like, but this attitude is inspired that by the fact that this person died long before when he decided to get into a river with crocodiles to cross the other side. You can't tell them anything. So that's what hungry, empty stomach breed. Cyril thinks the soldiers are going to stop this thing. If these people who are running these threads run these threads for a year, there will not be budget for those soldiers. Those soldiers too will be hungry. And as people loot, they will join them in the looting. Because they are hungry. There is nothing they can do. But what is even more dangerous for Cyril is that if they do not loot, they will turn their guns on Cyril and demand that this government must step down. It's very dangerous to take soldiers from the barracks because it might not be easy to tell them to go back to the barracks after they tested a nice life outside the barracks. So what they are doing is actually a danger on its own. The banks have always colluded with the scammers. The banks have always worked with scammers. The only people banks hate is politicians. And politicians who are opposed to anyone who the banks have installed in the leadership of South Africa. If you hate Trevor Manuel, if you hate Pravin Godan, if you hate Sir Ramapos, if you hate Ino Godongwan, you are very lucky to have a bank account in South Africa. By just hating those people, you are the enemy of the banks in South Africa. And the banks that are conniving with criminals to steal from our people. Their transnet is collapsing. That uh, former CEO of transnet, Gama, was running a solid machine there. Now we hear that actually Brian Malefe was recommended by Sir Ramaphos. There is no noise. It's Ramaphos who recommended Brian Malefe. There is no noise. But if it was confirmed that Brian Malefe was recommended by Zuma, it was going to be a huge problem. Another politician recommended Brian Malefe. Brian Malefe, who we all concluded is corrupt. Now that he was recommended by the favorite, hey, the, the noise is not coming that much. So we exist in an era and time of hypocrisy. Let those who say we are lying tell us of a single achievement Ramaphosa has made or Praveen Godan. They thought they were going to lead this country for the next 10 years and the only thing they are going to tell us is that it is Zuma who messed up the country. Yes, we agree with you. Zuma messed up the country. What have you done to fix it? The term is coming to an end now. Cyril found the ANC here. The ANC is at its lowest from where he found it. Yeah? When he took the ANC at 63 he has now put it at 57%. Organizationally, internally, the ANC is at its weakest state. But defenders of Cyril and the media will make you think that Cyril has put the ANC from 57 to 65. What is this? Two-thirds? No. 
Yeah, it's like Cyril has put the ANC as 66. If you listen without knowing the facts, you'll think that Cyril has improved the ANC's performance in elections and has built a strong ANC internally. Nothing. What has he done? He has purged all his opponents. DP? He can't pay salaries. Something we've never heard of in the era of those who came before him. Actually, when we were in the ANC, our salaries were increased by uh, 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 Matthew Posa under Zuma. We were earning as the president of the Youth League, I was earning 20,000, we were given 49,000. Increased from 20 to 49 by Matthew Posa and Zuma's leadership. There's never been a, a point where we never got salaries. Under Ramaphosa, the so-called imaginary president, the ANC is not paying salaries. West is even chowing the pension money of workers. How brutal can you be to lie to workers that you are paying their pension funds when you are eating them? Medical, medical aids are not being paid. But that is Ramaphosa, we are told, is the most performing good president. That is ANC Intel and Matters, they will fix it. Let's go to the state. He has not improved anything. Not a single institution has improved under Ramaphosa. Look at what they've done with the state security. They moved state security straight to his office. And then it reports to him. There is a sludge fund in that thing. It's 50 billion. 50 billion slash fund. Not even Auditor General can put her hand properly on it. That money, you don't get to account for it properly. He needs that money for the next conference of the ANC because there will not be another CR17 money. He needs that slash fund. So the only way to access that slash fund is to take SSA straight into his office so that they can use that money to manipulate the outcome of their conference. Remember, that money was used by Zuma's faction in Nazareth. He wants to do the same because no white capital will now give him money with this pending case of the CR17 documents being released to the public. They don't want to be known that they've given him money. They regret that. They will not repeat it. And he knows he's not going to get any money from anywhere. The only money he can use it's a slash fund. Hence the taking of state security agency directly into the president without a minister and put Zizi God on there. But lots of Arabu Zizi. Yes, sis. Thank you, President. Uh, can we have more questions, Commissar? Uh, Natasha Piri from SABC News. The first out of three questions is Mr. Malema. You seem to have cast credibility doubts on the IC candidate nomination process, which was extended beyond the 9 p.m. You recently tweeted that the commission was manipulating the system and that the ANC was running the system. Number two, Mr. Malema, I know you can't preempt the outcomes of the Concord ruling on the IEC seeking a relief that elections be postponed. But what outcomes are you expecting, seeing that your party is opposed to the elections being held in October. And number three, if the IC fails in its Concord bid, will you observe the lockdown regulations? The court heard from your legal representatives that if the Apex Court will not grant the relief sought by the Commission, then the Concord must make an order asking the President and the NCC to amend and promulgate lockdown restrictions to allow for political activity. More questions? Um, you know, we went, the, 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 the SG finished the registration of our candidates a um, few minutes before 9 o'clock. And then by 9 o'clock, we asked him to go and check if the system is closed. When he checked, the system was still running. And it was even saying uh, 40 minutes to go. After nine, we called the CEO of the IEC who said no. I checked, they, they said the system is closed. I said, 
I send him a video where the system was still running and open. What is casting doubt about that? It's a fact. The system was not closed at 9 o'clock. And the only part which had internal problems of registration was the ANC. But leave the system closing at, at 9 o'clock. The IEC says to us, we are postponing the closing time from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock because of the queries that came from different political parties. They don't give us the names of those political parties. How do you call that a transparency? They postponed the time because the ANC could not miss the deadline of 5 o'clock. In the IEC, we all asked for IEC to postpone elections. They told us all manner of things. It's not easy to postpone anything there. But they just came and postponed 5 o'clock and there's several political parties. What type of a name of a political party is that one? There's no party in South Africa called several political parties. The IEC should have been transparent from the beginning and said the following parties have requested that we postpone the time from 5 to 9 o'clock and we have adhered to that so that those political parties can respond for themselves and say, uh-uh, don't include me. I'm when I see crisis here. We are not part of that. So now we are going to be included there as EFF. EFF asked for a postponement of time. We never asked for the postponement of time. When you go to the ANC, the, meet, the ANC says, no, we are ready. There is no political party that ever said we are not ready. We were told by the IEC that political parties have asked for postponement. Till to date, the IEC has not revealed the list of which political parties were not ready at 5 o'clock. It means the IEC is in cahoots with these incompetent political parties and is prepared to accommodate and even protect their identity. These incompetent political parties which could not meet the 5 o'clock. So, we are saying to the IEC, be transparent. Don't talk to us in folk tongues, several political parties. What is that? Tell us who asked for postponement from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Tell us why was the uh, system not closed by 9 o'clock. And we want a list of all political parties and what time did they register their last candidate. They must tell us that. It's very simple. That thing is electronic. You generate that information and you publish it. If you are an honest uh, 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 independent electoral commission. My, we, we have always, a DP, opposed Machinini's chairpersonship of that institution. And now Pravini's friend is also a member of that uh, 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 commission, Judge Pillay, who declared in the JSC, that she's the best friend of Praveen Godan, a politician. Machinini had a nice, close relationship with Jacob Zuma. These things are run by politicians and ANC-aligned politicians. So, you, you want us to say, no, they're independent. Such commissioners, such commissioners, no, we can't allow that. Everything the IEC does, we must check it twice. Even when we go to elections now, the IEC cannot be trusted. It has got commissioners with questionable characters. So we cannot allow that uh, to happen. These people have been stealing elections from us for a very long time, especially here in Gauteng. And that nonsense must come to an end. We are not going to be the most reasonable people this time around. It's not going to happen. We are not going to reason with anyone, soldiers or no soldiers. We are not going to reason with this nonsense of ANC. You know ANC lost elections in 2019. Paul Mashatile came to us to start the negotiations of coalition. When we were in the negotiations of coalition, he got a call. And then he came back and said, no, they're saying we're fine. But their own results came in and they already accepted defeat. Someone somewhere went to manipulate system. They pulled Mashatile out of the meeting. Mashatile started saying to us, no, 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 we're fine. We'll not need anything. 
the ANC and Gauteng, they won at 50.1. Pure, pure manipulation. We have been reasonable people when people have been stealing elections from us. It's not going to happen again this time around. It's not going to happen again this time around with this incompetent IEC that is in cahoots with the ruling party to steal elections from opposition parties. Comrades, there is something wrong with the constitutional court. And when we say that, some fools are going to say we are taking the judiciary, we are not. There is a gross incompetence at the highest level of the judiciary, starting with the incompetent acting chief justice, Zondo. Zondo has put us in this mess. Why did Zondo take Zuma to constitutional court? Why didn't he take him to magistrate court or high court? Okay, why did he have to go to court in any way? Because that is a commission. If Zuma doesn't want to appear and there are allegations against Zuma, leave him and then rule against him. Take the vision that you have and say, I accept this vision. It's true Zuma did the following things. Because I gave him chance to come and, and, and clarify this matter, he refused. You proceed and rule against that person. No, he doesn't. What does he do? He goes and wants to demonstrate that he, he's got more uh, masculine power than Zuma, the masculinity. Bank Hishetana Makwafa at the expense of South Africa. Zondo. Zondo does not qualify to be our chief justice. He's the most incompetent person who has plugged this country into a crisis. He single-handedly did that. He knew the implications of what he was doing. Now he goes to the constitutional court on agent basis. The constitutional court gives him agency and takes four months, four months to, to make a ruling on agency. And then they still say in their judgment, proudly so, agency is granted. Agency granted after four months. When we grew up as laymen, we were taught that agency in court means life and death. It means this matter is so agent, we can even wake up a judge to adjudicate this matter in his dining room at home. Today, agency takes four months and no one wants to say anything. Because we are scared that one day when we are in court, these judges might have an attitude against us and send us to jail even when we are not wrong. Let them do it. Let them do it. Let them send us to jail. Our conscience will be clear that they are sending us to jail not because we are wrong, but because they have got a political score to settle. We are not going to be scared to talk about incompetent judges of the constitutional court who take four months to resolve an agent matter. There are rules in court, of the rules of the high court, which say no matter must, a normal matter on the roll, once heard, it must not take more than three months to be adjudicated. Not more than three months. They tell this to high court. I'm a member of the JSC. Every time a judge appears before the JSC, we ask them, how many matters did they go beyond three months? Once he says three, four matters went beyond three months, we go, oh, you, you, you. no, 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 no. You are not the type of a judge we want. But we have the constitutional court judges taking four months to decide an agent matter. And we are told we must keep quiet because judges are bigger than the constitution. Judges are human beings. If they're incompetent, they're incompetent. When we are incompetent, judges tell us we're incompetent. Why can't we tell them they're incompetent? Who are they? Are they bigger than God? We cannot give judges a status bigger than God's status. It must come to an end. That's why they behave in a manner they are doing. Because they know no one will criticize them. They are scared. Everybody's scared of them. No. Four months. Then Dali makes a rescinding application. He submit that Floyd on Friday. 
they respond on Saturday. That's how an efficient court must operate. They respond on Saturday and say, we want you to file everything by Monday. The lawyers do all manner of things. By Monday, Tuesday, they are done submitting everything. The matter is ahead. It's now more than a month. More than a month after they asked lawyers to do everything within weekend. They have a right to tell lawyers to do everything within one weekend. But no one has got a right to tell them what to do. A month. On a matter that they've given us an impression, all of us South Africa, that, yo, no, this one is a, it's not even an agent. It's, it's something else. It's tsunami. Saturday, Monday, this must come in. This must be heard. All of that. Within less than a week, everything is done. They must go. After making everybody run around, they must go and take more than a month. And when they do that, they keep Zuma in jail. They don't say, since we have granted this rescinding application, let the man go home until we have made a determination. What's going to happen when they come back and say we were wrong to say Zuma must go to jail without trial? What's going to happen? Because the man is already in jail. What's going to happen? Because in the issuing of the directives of that rescinding application, one of the directives should have been release the man until we have made up our mind. That is Zuma. I'm saying these fools are going to say we support Zuma. I'm speaking on a matter of principle here. The IEC says there is this matter is very agent. We join the court and say the matter is agent, therefore the Monday registration of candidates must be postponed. That Monday has passed. What is that judgment for? Why can't Zondo take that judgment and go and give it to his grandchildren to play with it? It's no longer relevant. We paid a lot of money to get a, 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 an advocate to go and argue before a court for the Monday to be postponed. That Monday has passed without a judgment. Without a judgment. We have registered candidates. We have had to work abnormal hours thanks to committed ground forces of the EFF and the leadership of the EFF who sacrificed everything within a week to get all candidates. It might not be a perfect outcome, but it was done. Zondo must give and that constitutional court, they must take that judgment of registration of candidates to be postponed and give it to their grandchildren to play with it. What, do we, what are you going to do with it? We, they should have told us there and there. Imagine DP if we trusted this constitutional court like we ordinarily should be trusting them. Imagine we said, hi right, guys, let's wait until the constitutional court has made a ruling because they can see this matter is agent is closing on Monday. Even when they see a matter is closing on Monday, they still don't give a ruling. And then we must respect them. We must respect people who don't do their work. They don't do their work. Someone must tell them. Someone must tell them. So, and I've taken that decision to be that person who's going to tell them. I don't care whether they like me or not. I'm not in a business of being liked. I'm in a business of telling the truth. If they want to hate me for telling the truth, so be it. I don't care. I, I've, I've no relationship with incompetent people. Whether you are a judge or not. If you are incompetent, you are incompetent. We're telling you nicely. Monday, this thing is closing. You still think you've got a luxury of taking whatever time. But if it was them, having given a directive that this matter must be done by Monday and you don't do it, now you are disrespecting the constitutional court. But the constitutional court has got a responsibility to respect South Africans and to respect the applicant before them. They never bothered to ask the question, uh, EFF cancel, what's going to happen if we don't give you a judgment before Monday? They never bothered. It's done. 
What was the point of going to them? What was the point of giving them such respect? What was the point of trusting them with the future of South Africa? When they can just sit there, whether there's a closing date or not, they don't care. Yet, we said to them, these matters are agent. If we are told by judges that these matters are agent, parliament must by this, this, this date have amended this act. We do exactly that. They are another, they are another arm of the state. They tell another arm of the state, by this period, you should have amended this act. It's unconstitutional. We comply. We never say judges are undermining parliament. But they can't listen to anyone. They do as they wish. They must know those judges. Respect is end. There's no respect that is imposed, not even by imprisonment. Apartheid imprisoned us. Apartheid killed us. We never respected it. We hated it more. What lockdown regulation? We are done with lockdowns. There's no longer lockdown for EFF. What lockdown? We are done. We have registered candidates. We are campaigning now. On the 26th of September, on Winnie Mandela's birthday, we are opening our office there. That's where we'll be launching our manifesto. There's no lockdown nonsense we're going to listen to here. What lockdown? We have registered candidates. It's so kill. Let's go. So, it's done. Lockdown of criminals who want to sneak their party back into power through a back door. And then saying to us, hey, hey, stay at home. Don't campaign. Don't campaign. But now they are campaigning. But now they are nominating candidates. Hey, we don't want meetings more than 50. We don't want meetings more than 100. But now they are busy doing meetings, electing candidates. We, we behave like the most uh, disciplined members of society. We must never listen to our enemies telling us how we must fight them. We must fight them the best way we know how ourselves. Must not listen to them. So there's no lockdown here. There's no lockdown that is going to tell us to do anything. We are back to the streets. The next campaign is that one of sleeping outside the house of uh, Helen uh, Helen Rees. We are going there. The next one is a march against anti-privatization. The next one is a manifesto launching of the EFF. In the between there will be those consultations on manifesto and rebeezy. Now don't tell it at the trial arena. We have no time for fools who don't know what they are doing. This government doesn't know what it's doing. So narrow over reg. What lockdown? Arabica lockdown. We are back to work. This weekend, all our outstanding regions are going to hold their RPAs. No policemen, no minister, no one can tell us not to hold our RPAs. At law tell it criminals. Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't convene meeting of electing uh, candidates. Boom, out to Monday registration of candidates is closing. How and where are we going to elect those candidates if we follow those lockdown regulations? That's absolute nonsense we're not going to follow. So, we must be very clear. We are dealing with a criminal syndicate here, which is not honorable, which is running the government and the state through the mafia style. And we must be vagabond. Otherwise, comply with nonsense. So we must not allow that. Moto Ucheri, SSA, Ucheri, Mo, control of 50 billion of unaccounted for slash fund. But no, yet to do it, uh, SSA is very important. What, what is more important than sanitation in the townships and in the rural areas and in schools? Why is Cyril not taking sanitation into his schools? Because there's a problem of sanitation. Why is Cyril not taking the building of schools and destroying of mud schools into his office from the Eastern Cape? If indeed Cyril takes things into his office when they are important. SSA. Yeah, gossip. That thing you better gossip. I have no capacity to do anything. 
It survives through gossip. They use it to get money to do political work. So if Cyril is concerned about anything that is not running accordingly and he wants to put it in his office, let him go and take sanitation. Let him go and take schools, uh, uh, mud schools in the Eastern Cape. Let him go and take water in Guyane. If he's a man who prioritizes things that are not going well in South Africa. I'm saying to you, without any fear of doubt, these guys took the SSA into Cyril's office so that they can have direct access to the slash fund. Thank you, President. Uh, more questions, please. Okay. Liz Zegatandwa from the Mail and Guardian asks, will the EFF field its own candidate in the big metros and will the EFF deploy any of its top leaders to a metro should they receive an outright majority? And uh, the second question is, the DA has indicated that it is open to coalition talks with any party. Has your stance changed around the DA? Will you be open to any partnership with either the DA or the ANC? And then Khaukhelo uh, Maholeho from UFM asks, during a previous press conference, Mr. Malema warned structures that failed to launch on time of implications. Did all provinces manage to launch on time? And then uh, thirdly, his question is, my observation is that EFF meetings to nominate candidates have been largely peaceful when the likes of the ANC have had groupings attack each other during meetings. How does the EFF get this right when its leaders come from the rank of the ruling party and were widely expected to act in a similar fashion? I think that's the last one. Can huh? we take two more? Two more rounds? No, so two more questions. Okay, let's just put this is the last round. This oh, last round. okay. So can we add questions? Yeah, two. Okay, and then... Uh, I'm not the news. <laughs> Sam Gelo Masego from the CBC asks, in, in Gauteng, all metro regions elected four males and Tswane has five males in the top five. What is the view of the party on this, particularly on women leadership in the organization? And then uh, I think, yeah, that's, and then Lisa Gatandwa again from Mail and Guardian asks, has all the top leadership of the EFF taken the vaccine yet? Um, we are contesting in all the metros and we've got candidates in all the metros so there is nothing called mayoral candidates so you must not impose other people's election strategy and way of doing things on the EFF it's not part of what we do and therefore if uh, you are fascinated by DA arrangement uh, go on with your DA arrangement so we don't have that all our candidates are registered uh, and we'll be contesting even in the metros. And uh, uh, there's no senior leader who's going to be imposed on anything except that when that leader comes from through the ranks of uh, the EFF. Coalition, we are open for engagements for coalition. We will look at what is best for the people of that municipality or a metro. Um, it will not be a, a national type of a binding a coalition and this time around we are going into coalition government ourselves as the EFF we think we have uh, amassed the necessary experience and we've got men and women who are now capable enough to can lead successful municipalities and those coalitions will be uh, 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 based on that so be rest assured after this local government elections there will be metros with EFF mayors either directly or through coalition. So, because we have asked these people to hold the fort, they are not doing the right thing. So, Etequini is ours. The first metro we are watching now, the biggest metro we are watching to take 100% directly is Etequini. We are not playing there. So, uh, 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 so coalitions are a second prize. We won the second, the first prize, and that is uh, winning uh, uh, structures. 
Structures of the EFF, all of them have met target. All of them have done what the requirements have uh, asked them to do, the guidelines. And we are very happy that uh, everybody uh, is now uh, following line, including Josie Butani this time around. Did his branch proper once it went in without any any problems. Those are the types of uh, leadership and structures we want. When a call it is made, um, uh, um, the, the structures must respond and must respond uh, positively. A vaccine is a personal matter. Uh, really, we can't be asking each other uh, those types of questions. All we are saying is that we need vaccine from China, from Russia, from Cuba, all vaccine that is scientifically proven to be effective, it must come to South Africa. So please, don't ask us whether we took vaccine or not, because the, question, the second question is going to be, which one? You know why they say that? They want to make us influencers of the Western vaccine. So even if we took it, we can't say, because we don't want to be, the, to be appearing like what they endorse us of the, the Western medicine. Um, we want people to take vaccine. The youth must take vaccine. All of us here, maybe one or two, have taken vaccine. And it is upon individuals to decide if they want to disclose uh, uh, their status, whether they, they were vaccinated or not. It's not for EFF to announce. We've seen people taking, you know, uh, 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 beautiful pictures and uh, with the former SG claiming to be a soldier and being very scared of a, a needle in a picture and showing the whole country that a former soldier is scared of a needle. Now putting all of his credentials into doubt that how can a former soldier be scared? What's what people like embarrassing themselves? <laughs> we put yourself there, out there, uh, you know, being scared of a needle. Uh, uh, and we want to thank really uh, this uh, uh, frontline workers who are helping with vaccination of our people. It is really a good thing. And we want to thank all those who have taken a vaccine and encourage that many more of our people should go. And uh, we want to say to our government, you are going to see numbers increasing when you bring uh, Sputnik, uh, Coronavac, Sinovac, and uh, the Cuban uh, vaccine because our people must have a choice. Some are doubting this Western vaccine. There is a pastor who was saying to me, very prominent pastor, no, we're waiting for that one Malema was marching for. So let people have options. Don't force us to people who gave serial money. No. Take us to vaccinate and make available vaccine that will be helpful to our people. The issue of gender and the outcomes of uh, uh, RPAs are a serious concern to the leadership of the EFF and there's been a huge uh, discussions even in the top six of the EFF to an extent that some even suggested that the constitution in the next NPA must be amended to give clear directive that a certain number should be reserved to females. But I hold a strong view that we must continue to educate our structures without imposing quotas in the top five or top six because those are not constitutional structures. What matters is the totality of the RCT has met the 50% requirement and we're very happy with that. But it will be the cherry on top to have the whole top five female if one day DP will just come from an RPA and everybody in the top five is females, then we'll know we're moving in the right direction. We're working towards it and we're not going to be rushed into it uh, by people who are not even gender balanced from the companies they come from and they never question those companies about gender equalities uh, in those companies. Uh, our meetings are peaceful because we are an alternative to the ruling party. We are contesting all the words because we are forming an organization that must exist everywhere in South Africa. We are not an organization of Indians only. 
We're not an organization of colors only. We're not an organization of whites only. We're not an organization of Zulus or Pedis or Tosas only. We are an organization of everyone in South Africa. That's why you will find us in Stellenbosch at a hardcore, at, at a crime scene called Stellenbosch were there. Uh, so we, 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 we are forming a formidable national organization. And we are the only organization after the ANC that has assumed such a character. So the ANC is going to die and no one is going to kill the ANC. It's going to die a natural death. And when it dies a natural death, where it's dead, there must be an alternative. So in Matatiele, if the ANC dies there, the alternative must be the EFF. In Umtata, in Umlazi, everywhere. The ANC dies, the EFF must be an alternative. EFF is not a cultural organization or a tribalistic organization. That's why it can have 4,468 meetings all over South Africa with not less than 100 people participating all of them peaceful. Peaceful. There will be pockets, one or two there, where there's reporting of a, a branch, a, a, someone grabbing a attendance register and tearing apart. And we'll ask a simple question. When they tear apart the, the attendance register in Mukwakwaila, in Mopani, Litaba sub region, who was number one? No, this one was number one. Why did they tear the paper? Because their candidate lost. And then they went the following day to have a separate meeting and elect their candidate. We take the candidate that won yesterday when we were tearing the papers because we do not reward bad behavior. Even if you are right, even if you are robbed legitimately, your conduct is the one that will make you lose your case. In the EFF, you must love the EFF when you feel like the EFF is doing a disservice to you. That's when you must love it more. You don't love it more when you are in the RCT. When you are out of the RCT, you are nowhere to be found in a week when the leadership called upon leaders and members to call branches to elect candidates. A lot of RC, former RCT members were not found. But these are clowns who are spending nights with us say, declaring their undying love for the EFF. Now they are no longer having positions in the EFF. When called upon to go urgently and intervene and rescue the organization from a possible mess, they are nowhere to be found. They never loved the EFF. The people who love the EFF are people who remain loyal and active even when they think the organization has done some disservice to them. Those who love the EFF when they are in positions, they are not in love with the EFF, they are in love with positions. So we really don't care about them. But we also demonstrated this week that we can do without them. Because they thought they are an EFF in that region, without them nothing will happen. We went in and came out with candidate smooth operation without them. Huh? They've been telling their wives and boyfriends and girlfriends that I, this EFF is going to die, they removed me. Where? Who are you? We are doing our stuff, my man. We are rocking, rock stars. Everywhere. Political rock stars. In the suburbs. At the, at outside the house of uh, a uh, uh, Rupert here in Sandest, there will be a post of the EFF with a candidate from there in Stellenbosch. Rupert has got nowhere to go. What is that place where they've got a museum? Graf Reinet. Yeah, there where they've got a, a, a museum. There will be an EFF poster outside the Rupert Museum. We're everywhere. We're in charge. We're running this thing. So people lose positions in EFF. They think that uh, uh, they can hold EFF at ransom. No, it will never happen. 
with or without them, who are rocking this thing, who are going to emerge the most powerful organization. Because this is going to be a solid foundation for takeover in 2024. We're taking over this country. So, no clown. We don't want clowns here. But I want to send my sincere gratitude and my appreciation to all members of the EFF who responded in less than seven days and did the right thing. And the leadership of regions, you know, I was laughing at the ones of Twani. They got elected today. And the following day, they had to go and find branches to convene and elect candidates. Out, out of their inexperience, when they were submitting, they were submitting one page without begging it up with the roll calls and all of that. And the report kept on coming and saying, no, it's 20 zero, 20 zero. Can't you know it's zero because they, don't, they have not mastered the art of reporting. Why? They came from conference straight to the ground, hitting the ground running. That is the type of leadership we want. I was so humbled by how the leaders and the members and the ground forces of the EFF have responded to this call. They have now internalized organization. They know what is needed to organize activities of the organization. And they do that without any problem. Um, uh, we want to specifically thank our Secretary General for having led such process. It, it, it's a very difficult task with IDs, with names of people not properly spelled. You have to pay attention to every little detail. So ours was done by Secretary General, not Deputy Secretary General or Acting Secretary General. We have a Secretary General who was presiding over the whole process. And those who work with me, they will tell you that it was not easy because when the closing time comes, you don't want to receive that call. Have you locked now? Is it done? No, no, give me to me. You can't say that. You can't say that. So he took all the pressures and at the right time, they sealed it and closed it. Seven days it took us to get male, male and female. We are not 50-50, but we are at 60-40, uh, 60-40% uh, male, 40% female. But the outcomes of the elections will be, ultimately, those who are going to represent us in the councils will be definitely 50-50 because we'll use the space of the PR to balance the gender and make sure that those who represent the EFF in council do reflect the 50-50 uh, parity. Comrades, the work starts now. You only listen to leaders of the EFF. You don't listen to government. You don't listen to social commentators. You don't listen to Twitter. We have no branch of the EFF on Twitter. You don't listen to Facebook. You listen to your leadership. Command and control. We are in charge. We are running this ship and no one will stop it. Only the leadership of the EFF through internal conflicts can stop this ship. But so far, so good. We are running a tight ship, we have a clear vision, and we are going to attain uh, that vision. The members of the EFF who have issues must raise them internally. Those who have disputes about the candidates that were elected, this and that, unfortunately, the deadline has come and has passed. Leave those disputes aside. Support all the candidates who are elected now. Because it is not their position. It is the EFF position. So you must always know that even if your candidate did not make it, the EFF made it. It has registered candidates. That must be the attitude. Stop telling us about non-existing disputes. There is no longer time for disputes now. Whether this incompetent constitutional court is going to postpone elections or not, we are proceeding, we are launching the manifesto, 
and the campaign is official. Whether elections are going to be held in February or not, the list in the EFF is closed. There's not going to be any amendment of the list in the EFF. It's closed. Even if they can postpone it again in the IEC, that space will not be utilized by the EFF. We're done. We don't run one program twice. We're now on the next stage and we're moving forward. And that should be the attitude of everyone who wants to complain about this or that candidate. Tell them that that space is done. We are now moving towards victory of the EFF. In the EFF, we don't invest a lot on individuals. We invest a lot on the brand EFF. Is there an EFF there, candidate? If the answer is yes, let's go. The beret is there. Let's go and vote for the beret to change the lives of our people. That's what we expect from disciplined members of the EFF. What is going to guide us from now, moving forward, is high moral and high discipline. Leaders of the EFF must now tell their families and children and everybody who cares to know they'll be spending a very little time at home because they will all be assigned not to big municipalities, to sub-regions. They will be focusing on specific words as individuals. And every individual leader in the region, the province, and national will have to individually account about what is happening in those uh, 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 words, whether we're winning them uh, or not. All branches that need 110% support of the EFF nationally will have to submit 500 registered voters who have confirmed now that they are going to vote for the EFF. Such a branch will get 110% support from the head office of the EFF. That branch will be regarded as a special branch that will enjoy the maximum attention and support of the leadership. Fight us. Attack. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President. That brings us to the end of our press briefing. Uh, so we'll wind down. Let us wind down fully. Thank you. Thank you very much, President.